Wiley, here's my prerogative on the whole situation. He was talking kind of wild and he was generalizing by saying the Jews this, the Jews that. And that's what he apologized for. But what stuck out to me is the fact that his manager is Jewish. And when he goes to court to sort out any little disagreements, he's realizing that the lawyers are Jewish, the judges are Jewish. And he feels like these particular people are grouping up based on race or religion. And to say the least, they're dealing with him unlawfully, unfairly. This is racism. This could be happening in the rap game or the entertainment industry every single day and we would never know. The reason why we would never know is being shown to us right now. Wiley is sharing his experience, sharing his opinion and the same people who be saying have the power, the same people who be saying could silence him have literally silenced him and I've never in all the time I've been on the internet I've seen videos come down I've never seen a man's YouTube page get banned and this brings me to the birth of rap I'm not sure about the dates but I know it started off just a cool vibe it was positive music if anything it was a way to like escape the racism that was going on in America but hear this if you tell a kid every day you're a bad kid and you treat him like a bad kid his whole life he might turn around one day and say yeah man's a bad man likewise if you have a girl or there's a girl and you tell her every day for her whole life you're a bad bitch yeah she's a bad bitch she might start to believe it and turn around one day like yeah i'm the baddest of the baddest and i say that to say this african americans were being called aggressive, rude, niggers, etc. Until one day they turned around and said yeah and they made a rap group called Niggers With Attitude and that's when they started to gain all the traction. That's when people started to take a like into rap music. Niggers With Attitude was literally a case of someone calling you something for so long to the point where you accept it, you own it, you start to rebrand it this brings me back to the Jewish community. A Jewish man called Jerry Heller was so happy about this that he signed NWA, Niggas With Attitude. And then a Jewish man called Jimmy Iovine at Interscope signed Suge Knight and Death Row, bringing through Snoop, Pack, etc. And then a Jewish man called Doug Morris at Sony Records signed P. Diddy and Bad Boy, bringing through the Notorious B.I.G., etc. So when the East Coast, West Coast beef was going on, there were Jewish families and Jewish communities making most of this money from the music, while the rappers' families and communities were suffering from the influx of murders, police presence, and of course, police brutality, and all the sentences, life sentences, death sentences that were being passed out. And it doesn't stop there either. A Jewish man called Leo Cohen at Def Jam Records signed Jay-Z and Rockefeller bringing through Beanie Siegel you know all the artists on Rockefeller then two Jewish brothers called Avery Lippman and Monte Lippman at Republic signed Birdman bringing through Cash Money Little Wayne and then he Little Wayne then started Young Money underneath Cash Money hear this now Interscope Def Jam and Republic are all subsidiaries of a parent company called Universal Music Group. Stay with me. Universal is owned by a Jewish man called Lucian Grange. So what we have sometimes is a Jewish owned company signing Jewish distributors who are signing labels that are sometimes signing labels that are signing artists. So before the artists can see any money, there could be a few major corporations who need to see money first. These same corporations can manage and market the artists in whichever way they want. And this is where the sold his soul kind of talk comes in. Because sometimes people are signing away their art, selling their rights, selling their creative control and becoming nothing but pawns or slaves to the corporation. And if the owners are manipulative people, racist people 
or anything of that nature, that's a whole new problem. Some label heads have been accused of Satanism. I've heard rumors about execs and distributors putting secret messages in the lyrics or secret messages and symbols in the videos like the Baphomet symbols, for example. I've heard rumors about the mansion parties and what goes down when you're being initiated in and the people that have said some of these rumours are celebrities that have then been shut up, expelled, crucified in the media and this is why people ain't talking. This goes back to Professor Griff when he was in Public Enemy speaking out about the Jews. This goes for Cat Williams when he's expressing certain things and exposing certain things on his comedy. This goes to Dave Chappelle exposing certain things about the industry. All up to today with Nick Cannon exposing certain things about the Jews in the industry. Wiley is happening. Here in England, the Jews live in their own communities. They don't shop where we shop. They don't go school where we school. Nah, they got their private schools, private hospitals, almost private everything. And I'm intrigued, you know what I'm saying? It's just something I've noticed. People can't say anti-Semitism about an observation that can be proved, in my opinion. Last thing I'm gonna do is break down anti-Semitism and who it applies to. A Semite is anyone who has ancestors that spoke a Semitic language like Aramaic, Syriac, or even Arabic. This is anyone from Africa all the way to let's say Iraq or even further into Asia that spoke a Semitic language but what's happening what I'm seeing is a lot of Europeans who have converted to Judaism classing themselves as Semites you see what I'm saying they're Jewish by tradition or they're Jewish by religion they're not Semites through DNA through ancestral lineage um, but I just wanted to share my thoughts, drop your thoughts in the comments, it's your boy for free, stay safe and I'm out.